Hey guys, Gunpowder Handshake here again. We're going to be talking a little bit about the 1911 mil spec by Springfield Armory. I'm going to go over a few things real quickly with you on the firearm. Uh, some how-tos on disassembly. Um, also some pointers on uh, just general maintenance, field stripping, and cleaning the firearm. Um, I'm going to be changing on this one the hammer, the ducktail, the rounded mainspring housing, Go ahead and safety check it for our next one. Nothing in it. Now it's empty. Okay, and also what we're going to be changing is our barrel bushing here. Um, now you've seen the last parts list in the last video. Just to go over them quickly again. Hold grips. Nighthawk. Tool steel hammer. Drop in beaver tail, and here's the part number on it that is a 429 SG safety beaver tail drop in government stainless Wilson combat part. Also, we have a Wilson combat sear going into the gun. We have Ed Brown rebuild kit and an Ed Brown solid barrel bushing uh, ID of 0.5. 81OD of .699. We're putting the Kimber flat mainspring housing and speed shoot in. And also to secure our hoe grips, I'm um, not a big fan of the slotted screws only because they scratch really easy. You got one that goes up, one that goes sideways, never looks really good. Um, I'm going with the hex key uh, by Kimber as well. And guys, the reason I didn't go uh, one thing by every brand name was um, mainly just for cost efficiency. The Kimber Speed Shoot was $30 less than the Wilson Combat. The Nighthawk Tool Steel Hammer was about $25 less. Um, I really like Wilson Combat parts. I don't have any problems with them. Um, the barrel bushing was a recommendation, um, but uh, I mainly did it just to save money. Two other real quick things on installing the Ed Brown barrel bushing. You're going to need a uh, barrel bushing wrench. Uh, they make them in the steel, and also Wilson Combat makes these that are the uh, barrel bushing wrenches that are the polymer. Um, now this one is the blued steel here. Um, and this one is the polymer. I've got the case for it around. Um, don't have it on me at the moment. Um, but you can see it's Will's Combat. I would recommend this one. Um, only because using this you can already see a little bit of the scratching on the, the barrel bushing wrench. A couple of my friends have used it quite a bit. And the only thing is when you go to push it on, if you get it off just a little bit, you will scuff up the edges of the barrel bushing. Um, and maybe even your plunger here. So uh, I got it um, at first just because it was convenient. Um, but I've since replaced it with this, and I, I love this tool. It's great. It's hard and plastic. It doesn't break easy. Um, it comes with two different sizes, standard 1911, and then uh, a little different one, which is, I believe, the bull barrel model, which is really nice. Um, so I do like that. It's about $5, uh, pretty cheap. This one was about $7. Um, definitely this one was the better one. All right, guys. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and do the build strip of the gun. First thing you need to do is take your firearm, safety check it, put your safety on. Now the mil spec is only the single safety, uh, like the GI. The loaded model has an ambidextrous. Um, the video I'm covering is mainly on the mil spec and the GI models. Both of them are almost identical, um, minus the flare port here. But if you have a GI model and you put all the modifications on it I'm about to show you, the only difference you're going to wind up is just on your um, slide here. Your, your um, feed ramp is not ported and polished and then your slide doesn't have a lower cut on it like this one will be a little higher cut. Uh, both of those you can fix the feed ramp. Uh, of course you can always you know, go in and polish and sand down on it a little bit. Um, as far as the slide goes you can replace the slide if you really wanted to. Um, I just like the mill spec because it comes with those few extra features. Alright we went ahead and put the safety on the firearm so that the slide could not move. Now we're going to go ahead and take the barrel bushing loose. Now watch your spring guys because your cap will shoot off. And now what I'll show you again basically is here's the spring, there's the cap. You put this on, turn it clockwise, it comes off, catch the spring in your hand. Alright. Now what we're going to do, take the safety off. Slide back. 
until you get to this first notch right there. When you get to the first notch, push, and the slide stop comes right out. Now we're going to lay the slide stop down. I'm going to go ahead and slide the slide off the front of the firearm and lay it down. Okay. Now we have the frame left. What we're going to do with the frame is we're going to go ahead and remove the grips. Give you a little better angle here. Well guys, if you have any questions, any different parts, any recommendations, anything like that, if you have, please ask. Um, I might not know every answer. Uh, i got a lot of friends, a lot of firearms. We can find the answer for you. Um, something's going to be the right answer. I know I'll make anything up and tell it to you guys if I don't know. I'm going to find it out for you. I'm going to respond back that I don't know. I don't want anyone to get hurt. I want everyone to be safe, of course, and enjoy their firearm. I will have to say that I do love the 45. It is one of my favorite shooting guns only because it's got plenty of kick. It's extremely accurate. Just a great all-around gun. Um, a lot of the customizations you can do, uh, these guns are very simple. You can do yourself. Um, nothing I would recommend taking to a gunsmith unless you had some damages or you really didn't feel comfortable. Other than that, I mean, everything on the gun comes apart very simply. All right, now we have both grips off. Here's the frame of the firearm. Okay, now if you look on the back of the frame of the firearm, you're going to have your ILS, which is your integrating locking system. We're not going to be using that. The next hole over is going to be for your mainspring. Now, inside your bag of parts that come with your firearm uh, comes this almost like a little boomerang looking uh, piece of steel. Uh, you're going to grab it on one side, you're going to take the other side, and you're going to set it right in the hole right there, okay? Now with it in there like that, it just wiggles around. And now what you're going to do is you're going to put your thumb on your hammer so it doesn't fall. One thumb on the beaver tail, take your finger, pull on the trigger, and release. Now once it is released, if you notice, it's really tight in there now. Now what you can do is lay this down. And what we're going to do is it'll bring in a... I like to use a little block of foam. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and take our punch. Block of wood. And tap right through it. And there comes your pin right off the back side. And see with this punch, it actually goes all the way through. It's one of the reasons I recommended them, guys. Stanley makes them. They're pretty cheap, couple bucks. Now once you have the pin off, you don't want to put your finger on that and slide it straight back. Now we're going to set that aside. Let me pan back out so you guys can get a little better look here. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do with that out, we're going to cock our hammer down. Now, on the back side of your gun, if you look right here, the very back pin closest to your duck bill is going to be for your safety. What you're going to do is push that in while wiggling your safety up and down. And then now when you wiggle it up and down, be very careful because there's a little pin in there. Spring and pin. And this is what it is. And it will shoot out. It shouldn't shoot too far and usually a couple inches. And you're just going to lift that straight up. And lay that down. Now when you do that properly, your beaver tail, or duck tail, I'm sorry, will come right out. Leaf spring. Okay. And then your hammer. We'll go ahead and pull the pin on the hammer. Lay it down. Hammer comes right out the back. Last pin we got. Bring in for this here. Last pin we got. Right there. You just push in from the other side. Lift straight up. Now on this one, be very careful. Hold your gun flush. Put your hand under it. And tap on the top of your gun. If you do, your sear should come out. Lay the sear down. And then your disconnect will come out. I'll show you how to put all that back together. Alright guys, this has been part two of the video here. We've taken the gun apart. You're left at the frame now. Now I did not replace my trigger because I like the way it looked. If you do, I'll show you that in part three. Well guys, this is Gunpowder Handshake. Signing off. Check out part three. Thank you.